The current gameplay footage that you're currently watching, it is an early prototype of the Gem Engine that was created by Ukrainian-based developer Bestway that was founded in 1991, later on releasing their first video game title named Upfront, or in Russian, Behind Enemy Lines. But the game was later retitled in Western market to Soldiers Heroes of World War II and was published by British publisher Cosmaster. On July 2, 2004, the game was met with favorable reviews for its destructible environment as well as its direct control features, giving the player the ability to be in direct control of your unit such as aiming and movement, which was quite a unique feature for an RTS game at the time. It was successful enough that it warranted a sequel that was commissioned by 1C Company to release a spin-off title, but instead of being developed by Bestway, it was outsourced to studio Dark Fox, and it was eventually released in 2005 under the title Outfront Saboteur for the Eastern European market. Later on, Paradox Interactive acquired international publishing rights and in 2006 released Silent Heroes Elite Troop of World War II. But due to the name recognition and poor marketing, the game was sadly forgotten. But it cannot be said the same for the Eastern European version, as two spin-off titles was commissioned by 1C Company, starting with Outfront Saboteur 2, developed by Dark Force in 2006, and Outfront Saboteur 3, developed by Real Law Studios. Both titles unfortunately never had a Western release, as the true successor was currently being developed with an upgraded engine by Bestway, titled Outfront Behind Enemy Lines 2, but later been changed to Faces of War, due to an agreement with punch publisher Ubisoft, and eventually released on the early months of September 2006. The game reception was mixed as best, as the game did have an updated engine, but all the new features were not well implemented, such as the squad's base system that didn't function properly, due to the poor artificial intelligence. Overall, the game have an excellent single-player campaign, as well as a revamp multiplayer, that later became the hallmark of the series. Faceway later on got working on their next title, Behind Enemy Lines 2 Desert Fox, that was later retitled on Western release to Man of War, with the help of Digital Mindsoft, a German-based studio, to help to improve the game for the European market, as well as translation. Man of War was released in late February in 2009 and became a financial success, but it also received its fair share of criticism, such as terrible voice acting and pathfinding, as well as its terrible artificial intelligence. Regardless, the game was successful enough for 1C to commission multiple spin-offs under the Man of War title, starting with Black Jacket, or in the Western release, Man of War Red Tide, that was developed internally by 1C Entertainment and released November 1, 2009. The game was primarily focused on the Soviet naval infantry. That was only a single player experience that was heavily criticized due to the lack of a co-op feature. Regardless, another title was being developed by Digital Mindsoft, titled Men of War Assault Squad, and the primary focus was multiplayer. The game was released on the 25th of February 2011 and was very well received, and it was a critical success. Later on that same year, 1C published Man of War Vietnam that was developed in-house by 1C and was released eventually on September 9, 2011 and it is the first time that the series was set in the Cold War era. The game reception was mixed, citing the fact that it was really not an update to the series, despite the fact having a multiplayer feature, which was added later, just a couple of weeks to the release date. Regardless, it must have been moderately successful, as 1C Company decided to commission another Man of War spin-off, this time under the title Man of War Condemned Heroes, which was made in-house yet again, and was released on April 12, 2012, and the game was mainly focused on convicted criminals of the Soviet Union, under Order 227, for individual soldiers to serve their sentence in the Soviet Penal Battalion, which was tasked on suicide missions under the order of Joseph Stalin, which is very original for a video game to explore. Unfortunately, the single-player campaign was very lackluster. In other words, nothing special in the series. It also have a multiplayer feature that was exactly the same that was offered in the original Man of War of 2009, but you only had two factions, Russia and Germany, and the review of the game was mixed as best. But no worries, during that time Man of War Soul Squad 2 was in development by Digital Mindsoft, 
and there was an early access version of March 2014. But due to the GameSpy shutdown, the game was pushed to an earlier release of the same year on May 15, 2014. And due to it being released so early, the game suffered heavy performance issues, as well as a broken netcode after transferring to the Steam server. It also doesn't help that the game engine was running under 32 bits, meaning that the game suffered from memory leaks that would result in the game crashing, as the game itself cannot handle higher polygon count and the game will have random performance drop, be it in multiplayer or single player, due to the limitation of the game engine, which was never fixed till this day, despite multiple DLCs. And speaking of DLCs, a Soul Squad 2 Man of War Origin was also released, which is quite a confusing title as it is. It is a so-called remake of Man of War from 2009, with updated graphics from Man of War Soul Squad 2, which in reality is just the updated assets for Man of War Soul Squad 2, with no upgrade whatsoever. It is actually a downgrade from the original Man of War from 2009. The reception was generally negative, but you wouldn't know that since they managed to disable the review section on Steam. The game was ported by Digital Mindsoft, but you have to remember it was commissioned by 1C Company, that I will explain later on. As during that time another spin-off, called Battle of Empires 1914-1918, set during the Great War, or in other words World War I, published by Best Way Soft, and developed by Great War Team, and published on the 22nd of July 2015. The review of the game was generally mixed, but well received by diehard fans of the Man of War series when it's come to the single player aspect of it. The major complaint was generally the amount of DLC you have to purchase, but overall it had an excellent single player campaign if you can afford to purchase the individual DLC. A multiplayer mode was also included, but it was very limited. And now another spin-off from the Man of War series called Calls to Arms, oh boy, published by Digital Mindsoft and developed by Digital Mindsoft. The game has been in early access for nearly 4 years and was officially released on the 27th of April 2018. Kula fool me. The game still suffers from major bugs as well as performance issues. And frankly speaking, I do not want to go into details. Let's go to the next title. God damn it. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. Alright, Man of War Assault Squad 2 Cold War. Developed by Digital Mindsoft and published by 1C Publishing. Released on the 12th of September 2019. I don't think I have to say much regarding this, considering how it was received. But you cannot really blame the developer. They had a very limited amount of time to make the game, which was pretty obvious. The point that I am making, that the blame should not all be taken on the developer, since it is generally the publisher that commissioned the game and set the game schedule of release. So I am just saying the blame should not be given entirely on the developer. It is unfortunately common practice in the video game industry that the developer get blamed for a bad game and not the publisher for an unrealistic schedule. Moving on, it is Soldier's Arena, later retitled to Man of War 2 Arena, that is currently in beta and officially not released at the time of this video being made. That is also the same case for Gate of Hell, but it's seen that the developer is moving to a new engine, but nothing has been confirmed as of yet. There's also Red Rising Eastern Trident, but very little is currently known of the game, or release date, for all of them in fact. And that is the complete history of the Man of War series. Here's an additional bonus. There was another spin-off of the Man of War series, called Skin Valley is on Fire, that was focused on the Georgian conflict with Russia. Not that Georgia, you silly Americans. But this one, but later cancelled for unknown reason. Probably. <laughs> Alright then, hopefully you enjoy the history of the Man of War series. Till next time, goodbye.